Good morning to one and all. Helen Hayes once said, the expert at anything was once a beginner. If you actually learn to like being a beginner, the whole world opens up to you. In the previous video, we were able to provide a clear-cut insight into physiology. Today, we will be discussing some queries on anatomy. We have invited Dr. Sheila Shivan, Professor and HOD, Department of Anatomy, to this program. She is very well known for her enthusiastic and approachable skills among students and faculties within a short period of time. She is also very well known for her renowned teaching skills and ability. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Welcome to this program. Anatomy mainly deals with the study of the human body parts and their relationship to one another. For a beginner, anatomy is just the study of the growth structures and dissection. Is it true, ma'am? And what is the importance of anatomy in dental practice? Anyway, that's a good question. Well, I would like to say that as a whole, anybody who looks from outside, they all feel that anatomy deals only with the gross structures. So it is unlike other than the gross structures, there are many other fields in anatomy where, which anatomy handles. And other than the gross anatomy, which everybody have got an idea that, okay, anatomy means it is a cadaver, it is dissection, you see the structures, you see the organs. Other than that, you go into the depth of the structures too. And that involves like the histology, which is actually the microscopic anatomy of all these structures. So we deal with histology, that is the microscopic anatomy. And another field or the branch of anatomy is the, we call it the osteology, which is deals with the bones, the study of the bones, the features of the bones and everything, all the details, even the growth. So when I come to the growth, I would say again, anatomy, another very important field of anatomy is embryology. So embryology deals with the development of the uh, organs or from right from the beginning of the, your, what you call the gametogenesis onwards until a baby is formed, a fetus, the whole development, even all the stages of development, all the uh, development of the fetus as well as each organs, all these embryological aspects are dealt with. And along with embryology, anatomy also deals with cytogenetics, that is the chromosomes, the chromosomal anomalies, all these are also dealt by anatomy. Another part which anatomy deals with is the radiology, the radiological anatomy you call it as well as the cross-sectional anatomy. The cross-sectional anatomy is actually very important nowadays when we deal with the CT scans, the MRIs where you need to understand how the cross-sections of the body comes and what are the structures which you find at each level of cross-sections you take and that is also dealt as well as radiological anatomy deals with not only with the x-rays we know that and there are uh, you call the contrast x-rays are there as well as the MRIs, CTs, ultrasounds all these is basically it depends on the knowledge of anatomy so that is also a field in anatomy and you go to a little bit higher level you call go to the peer the postgraduate level you we deal with the museum techniques the preservation of the specimens how do you preserve a cadaver as well as the histological techniques you we deal with the in depth as well as comparative anatomy is another field that is the comparison of human anatomy with the other animal anatomy there is a comparative anatomy so all these are fields of anatomy so that is uh, we say that whole as a whole anatomy is like and when it comes to dental it is the same it is nothing different from what a medical student learns and what is the relevance of anatomy that is whatever it is we say that these are the basic subjects yeah. so what is intended by anatomy is what is normal so unless you don't know what is normal you won't be able to make out what is abnormal yeah. So that is the main thing. So what is the structure? Where do you see these structures? How is it related to each other? When you do a procedure or when you see a patient, why, where, when, how, all these has to be answered. You need to know everything what is normal. Yeah. So similarly, that is the relevance in dental dentistry right, also. Right. See. Ma'am, physiology mainly deals with the functioning of the human body parts and the organ systems. 
So, how is anatomy and physiology correlated, ma'am? Well, when it comes to correlation, or we, rather we call it integration, yeah. you integrate the learning of all these subjects because we deal with human beings as a whole. And when we take subject by subject, it is actually like a piecemeal, we are dividing it into many parts of them. And later on, we have to put that all together. And to like a jigsaw puzzle, we can say that there are bits and pieces where you have to see, you have to understand, put it together, then it becomes a clear picture. Similarly, everything has got its own part. That is, understanding anatomy is necessary for physiology to understand the functions. That is, the structure is needed to understand the function. Or rather, I would say that I would like to give as an example, like uh, if you can say, like if you want to make a car, yeah. or you want to make a car running, what do you do? You need to know how to build that car, how the structure should be, how the machine should be, where to keep, so that it functions yes. in that way. Similarly is anatomy, mm -hmm. that if you know what are the structures, how it, uh, how it functions, like if in a human uh, anatomy or if a human being you take, you know that Okay, renal system, urine is produced, so that is a function, the waste is, waste is removed, blood is filtered, that you study in physiology. But when you come, how is this happening, where is this happening, what is the structure and how the blood comes there, which artery brings it there, what is the structure of the kidney through which this filtration is happening. Yeah. So to understand that you need to yeah, know what is the structure of that organ or anything. Mm. Similarly, for any uh, you call any system you take, whether it is the nervous system or you take the muscular system, the musculoskeletal system, even how a joint moves, what is the structure, how is that movement happening, which muscle contracts to make that movement oh, happen. Yeah. So, you need to know the attachments of the muscles, then only you know how when it pulls which movement happens. Yeah, so, similarly, that is how you can need to correlate all these things. So, it is like a correlation or integration. You know the structure, you understand the functions as well. Anatomy okay. mainly deals with the study of the blood vessels and nerves. Um, is there any technique for memorization? As a beginner, it's all difficult to memorize this blood vessels and the nerves and everything. So, is there any technique, ma'am? Technique as such, I don't know that is uh, but i would say it is not only uh, vessels nerves or muscles in anatomy but the problem i would say is that instead of uh, understanding a technique of learning anatomy it is how you learn anatomy everybody have got a impression that everyone feels that what is there in anatomy everything is there it is there you have to just mug up mug it up by heart learn my by heart I have heard many people telling that you learn by heart anatomy, but it is not like that. If you just open your textbook, you just go through the pages, you just read through it, you try to just uh, like a poetry, you are trying to mug it up. It would be very difficult to recollect later. Instead of that, the most important what you said as a technique is that you pictureize it, pictureize it and learn. Like I always tell my students, if it is a nerve or a vessel, what usually what we say is that what is the origin, what is the cause, relations, branches, that is how we go about when we start describing a structure like a nerve or a vessel. So what an example I give to my students is that, you imagine that you are going on a road trip, you started from somewhere. Okay, you are going on that way. So, which road you took, that would be the course of that yeah. structure. On the way, you saw, saw a beautiful uh, river on this side or a mountain on the other side. Those are the relations of that road. Mm -hmm. So, that becomes the relations of course. Yeah. Then you saw one road going to one another direction, branching away, that is a branch. So, you imagine, have such imaginations, have a picturization where it begins, where it is going. So, along with that, you are studying the other structures. Again, like something called an integration, even anatomy, we teach piecemeal, that is one part, one region, then you go to the other region. Then it is like that, you can't teach everything in one stretch. 
so later on i tell after you have finished reading or learning all the regions then come again correlate everything bring it together then see okay this is here this is there picturize it see it see a video in there are many te teaching learning videos animated videos are there go and look into that picturize or the best method is that you make something like a model of any structure learn that structure use that model keep it along with your anatomical position and see how you are telling okay this has got the surface this you say you use all the anatomical terms like anterior medial anteromedial posterolateral and all the these are so confusing yeah. so you need to first understand why it is said anterior why is it said uh, lateral or anteromedial because then only you understand that concept why that structure is being described like that so that part of understanding and getting an orientation is the most important thing in learning anatomy after that of course you need repeated reinforcement so that you, it will last for a long term memory short term memory only will be there you just mug up you can immediately tell that for long term memory you need to always keep on reinforcing things Yeah. so that is like any subject we say that so these are the some techniques which you can use for learning or understanding anatomy mm -hmm. that way of understanding is very important in learning anatomy yeah as a beginner man how to approach anatomy in examination point of view from examination point of view when we talk well just now i described the how to study anatomy what is the technique of learning anatomy and that is a technique where you make your learning interesting also so when you learn like that it helps to memorize now when you come to examination there are certain other things which you it is very important most important thing in examination is that the time management time management is very important when you start answering the questions so you have to have a very clear cut idea about how much marks are there what is the time you have in you with you yeah so then you have to design a pattern okay this is the time this much time or this much minutes i am going to spend on an essay yes. and then how much time you will spend on a short note and then that you should have a clarity before you come for the exam itself in the examination hall keeping an eye on the clock you have to plan it out read and understand the question paper thoroughly attempt the answers because i think for even medicine or even dentistry we don't insist that they have to go in that order of the questions yeah. so they can write the questions which they know thoroughly they can attempt that first so that immediately they can finish off writing that but in anatomy it is very important that you arrange your answers in that order like if it is a nerve what is the origin what is the root value what is the course of that nerve the course you have to describe then the relations of that yeah. then comes the branches name the branches then the distribution of that branches what all it supplies and of course at the end you have to mention the clinical importance of that structure yeah. that becomes an answer for that whole question yes. if it is a muscle okay of, of course it is the attachments origin insertion nerve supply and actions usually you describe in a muscle when you talk about other than that might be some muscles will be having some important relations like in dentistry i would say that it is the lateral pterygoid muscle you call it the key muscle there or the hyoglossus muscle again you call it the key muscle which has got many important relations also or if suppose if it is a digastric muscle you can mention the developmental uh, part like both the uh, bellies are having different development from separate arches so like that you can describe and all those points should be there with the correct subheadings underlined which is catchy for the whoever is valuing the yeah, answer paper answer. you underline the what is important and of course the very important thing is that you describe the structure and you have to do or draw a supportive diagram there 
So that drawing a supportive diagram, I don't mention that it should be a very beautiful artistic diagram or nothing like that, but just to support that answer how it is like, yeah. even if it is an embryology question, you have to write it down, you have to draw a diagram and uh, label, label it, it and then you have to finish off writing with all the subheadings in order. The time management being the most important thing. So, if you feel that you have finished writing everything which you know well, there might be some questions you don't know. Even if that you have kept a time for 5 minutes that you are going to uh, okay, write this in 5 minutes time. In between you are stuck, you are not getting certain points. You leave a gap and continue. Don't stop wasting your time thinking yeah. over it. You can come back later after you have finished writing all the answers. Then you can come and fill it up or do like that. That would save your time as well as it will not I mean, put you in a situation where you didn't get time to attempt few questions. Yeah. So that was the techniques or which are which are the important points which you have to keep in mind when you write an Thank exam. Yes. Lastly, ma'am, could you please talk upon the scope of anatomy as a career? Scope of anatomy as a career is uh, indeed a very important question. Everyone feels that what to do after anatomy. Mm -hmm. So that is why I told that there are many branches in anatomy which deals with many other that is the genetics is there, the embryology is there. So anatomy after you finish your post graduation in anatomy, of course the most important is uh, the teaching learning field itself and you can come into the education field mm -hmm. and you can progress in that. Other than that, you have got an option of choosing uh, the embryology, uh, there are uh, courses in Vellur Medical College where there are embryology courses, you can later on work as an embryologist there or as a genetist you can work, there again there are uh, certificate, I mean courses in uh, Vellur where you can do such courses after anatomy as well as you can also opt for uh, the PhD and research also. Yeah. These are also the scopes of anatomy yeah. which you can go further in anatomy. So research is of course a, co a very important uh, field where you can advance in the anatomy also. Yeah. So. Thank you ma'am for spending your valuable time with us. We are so grateful for uh, giving such a positivity and confidence to all the new peers who are new to anatomy out there. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wish all the new beginners all the very best in their career and future. Thank you.